Good afternoon to all the brothers and friends who watch us through different media and also listen to us. I am Christian and for me, it is a pleasure to be able to be with you again in one more video with such exciting topics as the end of the century or the end of the world. Call it what you want, but it is an end that the Lord is marking throughout history with signs in the heavens preaching His word, signs on earth that we have already been announcing since last year, October 14th, 2023, which was that first eclipse the beginning of the end, and this eclipse on April 8th is the end. As simple as that. You may wonder when the end will be because the end begins on September 18th, 2024. That is when you must repent and come to the feet of Christ. If you are not a believer, and if you are a believer, you have to establish yourself in the Lord. The Lord wants to give you a warning like the churches of Revelation 2 and 3, that they draw near to the Lord. It is the moment of salvation. It is the moment of the voice that announces, it is us. That there the groom comes on September 18th, the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. That is the day of our redemption, and less than 169 days are left. When the Lord is going to put an end to humanity, but we want to see what the Bible tells us about this eclipse. With Israel at war, now a very strong one is going to fall on Israel soon. It is impressive because they are going to recognize Christ in affliction. That is why God is allowing this. And it is still clearly seen that they have not invaded it. But what is coming to Israel, according to Zechariah, is very strong, but very strong. But don't worry. The church and everyone who comes and is part of the raptured church will not happen. It will not go through this moment. That is why you see many people on social networks with prophetic gifts speaking from the Lord. It is accurate, and many may not, but many are faithful believers. They are announcing to us, out of mercy, what is coming for those who will stay because it is part of the church that will remain on earth. They don't even believe in the rapture. People who are believers don't believe in the rapture, or they think they are there at the end, or they have a life where they have priorities, and they never expect it because the signs are going to be there at the end of the tribulation, or they are disoriented in the times, and they make fun. I speak in a general way by reading the comments on this channel where the Lord's people are divided and thank God for all the watchmen that the Lord has built and that he has shown them in their heart that these words that I preach are faithful and trustworthy, because they are the words that the Lord gave me for the last time. Therefore, without going any further, we could review those comments so that you can see how the Lord's people are doing, but there are also likes here on the videos in general. Therefore, the people of God are there. Those who have to be there are there. No man of God will make comments here. But he knows that the Lord is the one who measures and everything passes through the filter of the Lord. If it is going to be inaccurate or a lie, wait until September 18th, and we will see if the Lord supports or does not support this faithful and true word. Therefore, I want to get into the topic quickly. Still, not before telling you that this is a strike against humanity, a totally this sign in the sky in which all events and world events are going to come quickly starting on September 18th. We will see something now because we can see something a pressure until that day there will be. Still, from there, the Church of Philadelphia is delivered, and everyone who becomes worthy of escape, said Jesus in Luke 21 verse 36. Now, those who do not escape are part of the rebellious church. Therefore, God weighs hearts. We have always been told that there is a church that just believing in Christ is enough, saved always saved, and it is suitable for salvation that is enough, but the prize of the rapture is very different from salvation. This is a prize for the rapture of the church is not that in the end because we see that in the time of the great tribulation, they are saved. Still, the time of liberation from the trial was for the one who was found blameless the one who kept his word. We are going to talk about this in another episode. But there we see the division of the church. When I say church, I'm talking about people who say they are believers. So there will come a time when it doesn't matter if you enter now or last. Maybe you don't know anything about what it means to live a Christian life. Or maybe you hear for the first time without knowledge. 
But if you repent and are obedient to the Lord, you will become like the thief on the cross who, at the last minute, recognized Christ. There, they will not ask you anything about your life or what career you had. How different it is when a believer 30 years ago met Christ there. Obviously, the Lord is going to ask him to account for what he has done with his Christian life. He is going to measure it differently. What did you do with my word? What did you preach? What did you teach? Everything I'm saying is biblical. Therefore, there are many different situations and with what parameters the gentleman will measure. Let's get into the topic because time flies. Here we have the image on the screen of the eclipse of this April 8th. It will be like this now this sign appears in the Bible. It does appear, of course, it seems, and I am going to tell you where it appears. We are going to go to Luke 21 verse 25. This is the word. Signs that appear in its traditional version, any of them the word signs appears. But what is the word in its original form? Excuse my pronunciation, it is something like that. It sounds like one eye of, or something like that. You can see in an interlinear that word is the one that is translated as signs. We are going to go here to see if we can see that word. If you read the word, one eye of, and logos, in the interlinear, you are going to see what that word means. That word was translated as signs, but let's see that here there are several meanings of that same word one eye of. This is the root of the etymological word. Where does it come from? Point number one marks a sign, which is what it means in point number. It also implies tomb, gods, that is, wonder, omen, but look how interesting that I just marked it here where it says ring seal, figure, image, slogan, war cry, ring seal, and a sign. All are signs, right? Inside the sign is the ring seal, where the word sign in the sky comes from. Is it a coincidence that it is a ring of fire? No, it is no coincidence. This is the final eclipse, and let's now read Luke 21. Let's move on to the Bible. Then we find in Luke 21, verse 2, it says then there will be a ring of fire, signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and on the earth what anguish of the people confused because of the roar of the sea and the waves. This point, ladies and gentlemen, is the moment of the prelude to the coming of the Son of Man. It is the sign in heaven. This last one is so that in September, this appears as what I have been announcing since October. Now, many are announcing the same thing because the time is approaching. Unfortunately, many confused people say there will be a tremendous catastrophe here. Still, I will tell you something from the Lord. Those who the prophets are announcing, or those who have the prophetic gift should rest assured, so that those who are not afraid will not be frightened. They do not believe in prophets or the Lord's warning like I am doing. Also, if at this moment, without speaking in tongues, without anything, without scandal, I tell you this from the Lord because this message was already given to me last year. I know what I do is repeated. This is going to end in a catastrophe that is catastrophe that precisely those who have the prophetic gift are talking about saving food, water, keeping everything that you will need because it is going to break out 1,335 days from that date when the Church of Philadelphia is going to be raptured. The rapture is going to be that this earth is shaken because as we have said many times on this channel, the Spirit is the one who stops Satan and his angels from creating chaos on the earth such as wars, hunger, pestilence. The spirit the other comforter stops all this that Satan wants to do freely. Imagine when no one on this earth can stop him. You will see a massive catastrophe not of one thing, one thing, chain of different things. Just get up from his throne and the earth will shake like a drunk. That's why you see many announcing earthquakes and famine. It is what is coming. But many believers are going to stay. Many churches are going to stay because I am not inventing it. The Lord says, I have made you bedridden. I have made you great tribulation. Be worthy of escaping all the things that will come to earth. I will keep you out of the hour of the proof. Therefore, some Christians belong to the Philadelphia church, which is the church of the promise, and others remain. Unfortunately, 
they are part of the rebellious church. In the end, some of them will live up to 1,335 days, and many will die. This is what the Bible teaches. Forget that believing in Christ or just saying I believe in Christ, I'm done now. I'm going to calmly be part of the rapture. It's the reward for the person who was without spot and wrinkle and preaching the gospel of Christ gave him time according to the extent he allowed it. I do not know who those who are or are not part of the churches mentioned in Revelation are. I'm talking about some details that are part of Philadelphia. You can analyze yourself and realize if you can be part of the church that is leaving in the rapture. I am not here to judge you but to warn you that you are different. Look at all that is coming about those who are not worthy to enter because the powers of heaven will be shaken. This is for those who mock the rapture of the church since there will be no secret. There will be nothing. They also told us that it would be a secret, there would be nothing hidden, and 70 to 80 meters waves would destroy entire cities and half of the American continent. A tremendous cataclysm is coming that day you will not even have the time to denounce me. So clearly, I say it because it is this year when the signs are in the heavens, where everything is accomplished and where the Lord can no longer tolerate the injustice of a humanity that has turned its back on Him and that is going to pay for disobedience to the Creator. In this world, there are children abused in every aspect. Injustice everywhere, there was evil in the people, criminality and massacres, transhumanism, etc. The man got tired. And do you see humanity ten years from now or five years from now? What will become of our children if God does not take them out of here? There is a time for everything, which is why the Lord has to end it, and He has already done so. Glory to God. This will be seen here. We do not see a reasonable period for those who stay on earth. It says in the scriptures that people will be confused because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. These waves are announced to the United States and reach Washington, Florida. The Lord will sweep it away along with half of the American continent. This is prophesied in the visions of Christians who have already departed. But this day will fulfill them. This day, September 18th, the earth is going to shake like a drunk, not only in this American continent but also in the entire land of Spain, as the idolatrous country the most idolatrous thing I have seen without a doubt it will shake. There, they are going to have 48 hours of aftershocks of tremors. Imagine how that would turn out, but what they did not want to hear before, they would have to pick up later. Then those who remain alive will see the Son of Man, who will come in a cloud with great power and great glory. Glory is the second coming, verse 27. But in glory verses 25 and 26 of Matthew, he talks about the rapture. The word, then, at the beginning of verse 27 in Greek, means a change of scene. Of course, from the 26th to the 27th, people are confused because judgment is coming to them. From verse 26 to verse 27, there are 1,300 or so days, and they are precisely in the period where it will begin. So it's like what appears in the Apocalypse, which is a change of vision, and I saw that's what the word then means. We see this word many times then. As in chapter 25, it says, then there will be a sign. It finishes by explaining another scene from the previous verse and begins with a new scene, which means that there can be years of difference from one verse to another. Likewise, the word then in verse 27 is a change of scene with a difference of years between verse 26 and 27. It is evident that in the end, he appears with power and great glory in the second coming, but first, he makes them go through a catastrophe and a payment. They have wanted to turn their backs on our Lord and Savior. I want to go to the chart again since we have the word that tells us about the last ring of fire signal and I want you to see this important point from week 70. I am going to repeat it since many are saying, but yes, the seven years are missing. Forget about the seven years. The final seven years have already begun. Let's go to the Bible, Matthew 24 verse 3. He says while he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came aside saying, 
Tell us when these things will be and what sign there will be of your coming and the end of the age. This, brothers, which is what interests me, a sign of your coming and the end of the century, is precisely, here we have it in the original Greek, the sign of your presence and of ending the age together. What does this mean, that the Jews and anyone who asked at this moment already knew that the end was related to the presence? It is not that there are two questions here, but that they know that when the end of everything comes, Jesus appears in the clouds, which is the second coming, is not the act of the rapture. That is why Jesus is answering everything that will happen in Matthew 24. In the end, he ends up coming in the clouds and picks up what is already said in these videos of here. He gathers his chosen ones who were sealed before the wrath. They were sealed precisely so that he would not harm them, but the church of the promise has not been on earth for a long time. When anger falls, it is because several dead were completed, according to Revelation 6 verses from 9 to 12, which were the other people who died in the great tribulation. Those who now with great joy many Christians are waiting for instead of preaching about escape, a well-earned escape from preaching Christ, from keeping His word, from being obedient, not an escape from saying no, the Lord has not yet arrived, no, not that I still need to experience things. It sounds to me like they love life a lot. It sounds to me that they love this world very much, while many are there being kidnapped, raped, killed, and everything that is seen and what we do not see is only seen by the Lord. And it seems to me that they still have to preach to two people. The time of grace has a beginning and an end. The longer this time passes, the more there are who will be lost because the longer the time, the wider the path to perdition and the narrow path to salvation if you put it on a timeline. What is the result? They lost more so the Lord has to intervene. So, for those who say that no one knows the day and time and are left with only half a sentence, I always give a special section here to my little friends about the day and time no one knows. I remind them that for the love of others in Christ, finish reading the phrase where it says the Father knows it, in the same line he does not have to go much further. The same Bible says that the Father does nothing without first telling his servants. Amos 37 also says to Jesus Christ, Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it obviously whatever you ask the Father in my name, or where it says less on the day of the rapture. This creates a biblical harmony in that he warned Lot and Noah, Elisha, Elijah, etc., before the destruction. In other words, with all the love in the world, some people get offended if you talk to them a little about something that is not in their doctrines. Someone told me that I would be too abrupt to say things if I had seen Jesus kick the tables in the temple, or if I had heard the Lord say, hypocritical children. That person would have misjudged Jesus himself. There are Christian brothers who are so confused, but be careful not to find yourself fighting as the Bible says against God. You know why? Because the Bible says that in the end what I preach, if it does not happen, it is because the Lord dispelled it, it will not prosper. That is why they released the apostles and these men. If what they speak is from God, what they say will continue to stand. And if it is not from God, such a work will fall into discredit. Wait until the 18th. Many come here to say that nothing will happen on the 18th, and the same ones say that no one knows the day and time. It seems that they know that the 18th is not the day. They also contradict themselves. It's impressive how what is being seen these days among Christians because those who are here are not atheists. Many say, I use this as an example so that you wake up so that you repent. If that is what you're going to point out, repent, many people call me a false prophet. Because that does not bother me, there is no problem. They also told Jesus the same thing to the apostles. And the word tells me that we have to be happy when that happens. Thank God, because if the whole world applauded there, I would be worried. Still, in this way, I am learning that the Lord is with us, with all those who have believed this message and those who have received revelations through dreams and visions. They are preaching the end of times because their reward is great. Don't let anyone take away your crown, 
don't shut up, there are many voices out there, even from the pulpits wanting to keep us quiet. But they can't do the opposite. Thousands of people saw us in a very short time, 30 days. But there is the work of the Lord. That is the proof that what I speak is from God. Please see all the videos, and you will realize that the Lord is speaking for the last time because the last time is when the seals of things that were going to be revealed in this last time would be opened. After all, knowledge would increase. Still, it seems only for some, not all indoctrinated. I have been asked a lot about the 70th week. It is a week that the Lord set as we already saw himself in Matthew 24, answering a final question of the end of the age and his coming. He quotes the only prophet where the date of the rapture, you have to open your eyes. The Lord hid this information until the time of the end. That is why Jeremiah 3 verse 33 says, I will give you hidden things. They are big things, not small things. He gave us the day of the rapture so that the church would wake up. Who is the voice that announces the bridegroom is coming? Aramaic says the bridegroom and the bride are coming. That is another translation error. So the voice is everyone who proclaims the same. Here comes the bridegroom. Therefore, we are here this week according to the chart. In the middle, almost half of the week will be September 17th to 18th, 2024. Watch the video of Daniel's correct interpretation. This is where we will be taken away. The Lord revealed to us when the middle of the week is, and to this I refer. Many say that the 70th week began an Abrahamic covenant in 2020. Where it says this in the Bible, it does not say it anywhere. They say that some humans are going to start a pact with God. This is the most incoherent thing I have seen. Some humans sign a pact that corresponds to God. Remember that God makes the pact of the week with Israel. If you watch that video, you will understand it. He made two peoples one, Israel. We are all of us who believe in the Messiah Jesus. At the end of grace, we all enter Jews and Gentiles. Then, with the geographical part, what is Jacob's anguish? Some Jews are going to recognize Christ. That is why they cannot be raptured in their entirety because that is the time when the Lord is going to deal with them. In these last 42 months, their Romans 9 verses 10 and 11 are going to be fulfilled when among the last of the Gentiles here in the middle of the week the rapture that is us takes place. In Genesis 1 verse 1 to 44, there are three times that the Lord marks the times by the word move, which is the word for seasons in his Bible, but is holidays. In other words, there is a measurement of time from festival to festival and another from year to year. You can read it and another of days, which is with the moon. When we go to week 70, Daniel 9 from the 24th to the 27th, we find that the measurement of time is for the holidays. So this last week, and we are going to go to the text, stay with this graph. This is important because they are times of God. They are not Gregorian years. You cannot say they are seven years of 365 days. They are times. There is an approximate is from Passover to Passover when it marks a beginning and an end. Because the Lord dies in Passover. The Lord himself refers us to it in Matthew 24. And after the 62 weeks, the Messiah's life will be taken. But not for himself and the people of a prince who is to coming will destroy the city and sanctuary. That is, we know that Jesus dies in approximately the year 33, and we have confirmation that seven weeks and 62 had passed and he died at the end of the 69th. Week 69 was completed. Many say no. Continue that week 69 to the middle where he died. The text does not say that. Let's read it carefully. What the text is saying is that there is an event in the middle that we place in approximately the year 70, or 72, 68. What is the destruction of the? temple. Others say that it is the destruction of the second temple, the invasion of General Titus from Rome to Israel. I ask you, is that event there by chance? And week 69 and 70? It is no coincidence that in the biblical chronology you make a timeline, you have to put the death of Jesus Christ in the year 33, the destruction of the temple, which is the prince who is to come, who already came in the year 70 and what? 
And where is he going to put the seventieth week after the destruction of the temple then the week is complete? Look at it, you can see it here, and for another week it will confirm the pact with many, but who confirms the pact? Obviously the Messiah, the one who has been speaking in 24, 25, and 26 later when the Lord himself puts it at the end, which is the end of time, the end of the 6,000 years, the end of the century, and his coming. Well, obviously he takes away the sacrifice and the offering that we are. According to the biblical interpretation, that is why it is not lose here go to the backbone of all these studies which is Daniel 9 verse 27, is really the bombshell that the Lord is giving to the church for the biblical revelation of the moment of the rapture. Then once the Lord confirms the covenant with many and in the middle of the week the sacrifice ceases and the offering says that then the abomination of desolation appears, then it seemed. Until that moment the abomination of desolation or the desolator had nothing to do with it, absolutely nothing to do with it, they were not even in the previous text. So confirms it completely, it doesn't say half, so we can't say that the man was halfway through the 70th week. It's also a mistaken position for many who say it was halfway, it says there, and for another whole week it doesn't say why another half of the week, then there is a resumption of that week in the last seven years of history. Having clarified this point, I want to end with this graph that since the sacrifice and offering have been removed according to Daniel chapter 12 verse 11, here you are going to see 1,335 days, which is the rest of the three and a half times, they are not Gregorian years, it is the totality that Daniel is telling us and which is the other half of the times from Passover to Passover to Passover, and so on for seven years because the festivals mark the times. And the Lord's times and weeks are measured from festival to festival. Christ dies on the Passover festival, and the 69th week ends. So where will it begin on an Easter in the last seven years because the Lord's times are perfect? When Jesus Christ told the disciples, Go up because my time has not come, it was because he was waiting for that day in which he had to go up and this festive situation that the Lord himself says that he set up to measure time. The festivals are also feast by feast the festival of Passover which is the most significant festival where on that same night the lamb is killed and the unleavened bread is eaten which is what represents that Israel left Egypt at midnight and with a full moon, the same. Event that goes to spend September 17th to 18th in the Feast of Tabernacles, that the Lord is going to take us out of the earth on the full moon and in the Feast of Tabernacles which is why the Feast of Tabernacles appears in Zechariah, in the festival of the millennium does not appear another festival, the festival of Tabernacles appears. It is not in Yon Teruah that it comes because the day is not known. No, the Bible is clear. It is this festival where all the exact mathematics of the Lord He has revealed recently is nailed down. And you are going to see that He is going to pass through Yon Teruah, and the Lord is not going to come. And it is so because he is not going to do something that goes against his word. You can see precisely the nine mathematical and exact points of the Lord, who gives us the date from September 1st to 18th. Do not be scared because the Lord has revealed his day to his servants. Others say that not even Los Angeles knows it, and you do not. Do you know that the Bible says angels cannot preach the gospel? They repeat everything they were taught 40 years ago. Of course I understand that you have to submit to the pastor, but sometimes you also have to study, because the Bible itself says scrutinize the word. So spread this message, come closer to the Lord, believe him. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. No matter the negative comments, I am speaking to you who are listening from the Lord. Come closer to the Lord, he has put an end to this perverse humanity, there is no more time is over. You will see God's glory manifest that day, and the glory glory like this. It also happened with the ancients on the seventh day. It happened to Noah. It did not occur on the fifth day. It happened on the seventh. Because the Lord told him on the seventh day on this land, I will pour out the waters. And so it was. And now the Lord is warning that he is going to pour out his judgments on the earth for 1,335 days, where also the authority of the beast will be for 42 months, 
and where calamities will also happen here in heaven, on earth, and in the sea. So turn to Christ. Get your act together. This is no joke. This time is over. There are less than 100 days left for you to repent or establish yourself or to be firm. I hope you have been blessed. All this work is on behalf of all the brothers who also support us here. We have an excellent group of people with visions and dreams and revelation that is impressive. Do not be discouraged today has the word revealed by the Lord. Do not be silent because your reward is there in our heavenly homeland. Blessings and happy afternoon.